it is quite clear that from the pre-war period, immediate pre-war period on, that there were individual Japanese Americans certainly associated with the JACL, some of them, uh, who were informing on persons who they thought were subversive and ought to be locked up uh, to the FBI. The uh, Freedom of Information Act allows us to discover this, but it does not allow us to discover the names of those particular individuals. We get a, we get a blacked out document. I'm sure there were people inside the, American, the Japanese American Citizens League and in its leadership who never informed on anyone. Uh, I'm sure there are others who did. But in general, the, the policy of the JACL was to collaborate with the, with the government, to collaborate uh, with, the, uh, with, with some of the chief oppressors of the, uh, of the, of the Japanese American people. And you can certainly justify this as a political tactic. Uh, it's uh, very difficult to justify it as, as a moral position. Japanese American Citizens League, which from the beginning counseled cooperation with the government, was very upset, or at least its leadership was very upset, when protesters like Gordon Hirabayashi and Min Yasui, and there were a few other people, but these are the two people who were most significant at that time, uh, objected to the whole procedure. Uh, Min went downtown and insisted on being arrested. Gordon, uh, after a while, refused to obey the curfew. And very unwisely, I think, the leadership conducted a campaign of vilification against these people. It says, well, if it's unconstitutional and uh, we'll get our rights back, etc., but let's not protest now. And I think they should have been supported, or at least, at the very, very least, a neutral, objective attitude. Uh, I think no one could criticize, even now, if the leadership had said, well, we don't think that's a correct position, but of course they're within their constitutional rights. We don't counsel people to do that. Uh, but certainly there's a long American tradition of doing this. The JCL did not do this at this particular time. Later, however, after everyone was in camp, the JACL began to join briefs amicus curiae to cases that went before the Supreme Court. But in 1942, when the chips were on the line, when these, uh, the campaign was, uh, and there was a campaign of vilification, particularly against Yasui, uh, there were leaflets and, and speeches made. And I think that this set some of the tone for the way in which the JACL would operate. Uh, I think psychologically, its leaders were in a very difficult position. Uh, they had very little experience. Although they assumed that they were speaking for all the community and much of the outside world, both the government and people, generally took them at their face value. Actually, they were only a s membership in the JACL represented only a small minority of the community, and I think this made them less willing to countenance multiple points of view. Uh, it was an, this is an essentially authoritarian kind of position, which uh, people who are, in a sense, usurping authority quite often take. Apart from the initial stupidity of putting Japanese Americans en masse in camps and leaving alone the whole moral thing, uh, perhaps the most stupid, th the second most stupid thing was this questionnaire for leave clearance. Uh, the motives were not really bad. Uh, the WRA it was a bureaucratic organization. They said, well, they, they Let's, let's find, we can let loyal, loyal Japanese Americans go out, so they hand out this goddamn questionnaire as if that were a way to do it. In addition, they didn't bother to make up their own questionnaire, but they simply adapted a questionnaire that the military was already using to segregate draft age 
Japanese Americans who had volunteered, because there was no draft for, for, for Japanese Americans at that time, to make sure that they didn't get the, quote, wrong kinds into the armed forces, you can, you can say about this or that. And they, they, they used this questionnaire and gave it to everybody. Uh, these were people who hadn't volunteered to do anything, and it created a whole series of problems. And it divided families, it was absolutely unnecessary, it created fears. There were people who didn't want to go, as, as some people like to say, back to America.